should black people be fighting for equality in America? I two-dimensionally think we should not. Welcome to the Do You Know Black Kickback. I'm your host, Lamont Carolina, and this is the official after show to the game show, Do You Know Black? Here, we take contestants, we find a question from their show, break it down, and have a thought-provoking conversation. Y'all all sound like interesting people, <laughs> and I cannot wait to dig in deeper to what it is that you all are about. But before we do that, let's take a look at how y'all did on you alls show. Give my man's a body of respect. Got it, got it. Got hella Respectful. love for you, bro. So like, there's one vote that actually hit a little harder to my heart. <laughs> Cause I know this man, right? I'm a Capricorn, so we gotta say. Oh! I was clearly the best one. So. <laughs> Knowledge is power, and I'm too powerful, I guess. So. Uh... <laughs> What's the lesson we can all know more about black people? I'm gonna walk away with the massage. Wow. wow. Okay. All right, a lot to talk about. I don't know where to begin. Let's start with the loser. <laughs> Brother. Don't worry, there, there were three more losers too. That's true, I was just the first one. What happened, Ellie? What happened? You know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I thought I knew a lot more than I did. And, you know, like, being out there with the lights and, like, in front of the cameras, you know, mm -hmm. it kind of helps your, your mind go a little, draw more blanks than I, I thought I would, so, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. But don't be too hard on yourself. All right, yo, be hard on yourself. Oh, okay. yeah, no, I'm gonna be hard. <laughs> okay, that's all right, it's all right. You know, it happens, it happens. We win some and we lose a lot. All right. Oh, <laughs> what about you, sister? How did you do? Well, I brought the drama. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, things got pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think I got most of the questions right, mm -hmm. but um, we came down to a draw. Mm -hmm. It was half and half, mm -hmm. and I had to choose who had to go, and it was a lot of power. A lot of power. But um, Power in the pen. I, I made a decision, and I think it came back on me, and uh, I got voted out. Brother Marcus. Yeah, see, I was framed, and uh, that boomerang, uh -huh. it happened because, you know, she put some salt on my name. Um, she decided last minute she wasn't going to vote my man Michael off. After he drew this fantastic portrait of me, I was over there trying to like sketch him out too because he's, you know, works with watercolors and he's all smooth and stuff. I said, nah, we got to get him out of here. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing and they gave her the chance to change her answer. And then, you know, I would have been loyal. You would have been loyal? Yep, all right. he wasn't. So boomerang. Brother Michael, brother hey, Michael. Hey. You dodged the boomerang. Listen. <laughs> You soft talking Terrence Howard, brother. Go ahead. Look at you. Like Terrence you, Howard. You just like, yeah, you know I did. Listen, I, I, listen, I, I, I prefer to, to be there as long as I could to make the point that I, I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. You know? And how did you feel about your performance, uh, you know, in terms of answering the questions? How I felt about answering the questions, I was underwhelmed by my performance, to be honest. But for me, um, it was about salvaging the moment. So making it a lesson, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've read The New Negro by Alan Locke. I've done a TED Talk. I've done a whole bunch of things outside of this amazing platform of Do You Know Black. Yep. And it still didn't show up when the lights was on. Saying that to say, even the best of us can stand to learn more about mm -hmm. our culture and the things that, um, yep. our culture. You, you know, you bring up a really good point, Michael, and I'm gonna get to you in a second, T. But I just wanna stress that just because you know, folks get voted off and we say, do they, you know, this person doesn't know black. That's not inherently true. You know, we say it jokingly as a game. In actuality, you know, blackness and, and, and being educated, we can never stop learning about black people and not just in America, but in world history. And it just goes to show everyone who gets up on that stage, not just y'all, but the people before you, the people after y'all, they know blackness. They know about culture and history. They're a part of it. They're doing great things within their own uh, spheres of influence. And so this is just a game show. But what they do and what y'all do in real life, that's why we try to ask you your professions so we can better understand what it is you do and give the viewers insight into the types of people who we love to have on the show. So y'all all know Black in my book. And I think, you know, y'all doing some great work. So keep Thank it up. You. Thank all you. Thank right. you. Likewise. Right. And with that, uh, the person that actually did know Black in the game show 
What's going on there, Miss Victorious? Hey. Mm -hmm. What's up? So you won. Was it expected? No, I was actually talking to my friends about how nervous I was and mm -hmm. how little I, I knew. How little you knew? Yeah. How, I mean, I, I was really nervous. I had really bad anxiety. So I just felt like I was going to like not answer any of the questions correctly. Now, when you say that, right, because I'm like, you won though. Was there a strategy behind it? Were you like, I'm going to fall back. I'm going to play friends. Did you go into it with like some thought on how you were going to make it to the next round? Although I am a mixologist. I worked in politics for a while, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of read people and could sense how they were going to vote. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. She was a traitor. Plot twist. A trait? A trait? Plot twist. DMV, baby. The DMV. Yeah. There was no loyalty there. Yeah. Did she vote the first time? Did she help vote you off? Oh, yeah. Proudly. She was the first one. Oh. I mean, I was the first person on the couch. I was like, dang. I could have been the third person voting you off. Fair. Fair. Look, I think... Look, I, I'm sure it's all love. And the fact that we got two folks from DMV here, I know that afterwards y'all gonna have a talk. Y'all gonna have a serious Absolutely. Talk. Over right. chicken and mumbo sauce. Yo, mumbo sauce, yes. Salt, the pepper, best. hot sauce. All right, all right, all right. And viewers, hey, don't forget to comment who you think should have won or if you would be able to do better than any of our contestants in the show. All right, and with that said, I wanna get into the conversation. What organization was established in 1817 to send free blacks and emancipated slaves back to Africa? The answer, the American Colonization Society. All right. Ooh, you look hurt. You look like you, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's all good. So with that, I'm going to provide you guys and gals with a little bit of context uh, before we start the conversation. Okay. The American Colonization Society was established in 1817 with the purpose of sending free African Americans back to Africa as opposed to emancipation in the United States. This initiative divided Black Americans. Some believe the immigration was the only option to receive a life of, free of racism and oppression, while others believed it was their op responsibility to stay in the United States to fight against slavery and injustice. Similarly, many whites were divided on the initiative as well. Some believed free African Americans would have a better life in Africa, while others believed this was just an attempt to remove blacks from America. So with that, I'd love to get into the discussion. I'm going to present the first question here, and then we're going to have a conversation. All right. Given the racial tension in our country, should black people in the United States be planning an exodus to Africa? Uh, I think I think uh, I just want to throw that out there real quick. I think the first step is to kind of like create a, a relationship with Africa again between Americans and, and Africans. Um, I think there's a bit of a disconnect and there's some bit of repair, you know, that needs to be done a little bit. Just strengthen up that bond um, to see what the next steps are. Well, I just want to be clear when you say that, just just so we can all be clear when you say, you know, Africans, you, I mean, you have different countries, but what do you, I get, I get what you mean, but what do you, what do you mean by that? I just want to dig into I it. I think more like culturally, just kind of build relationships and kind of, um, kind of see each other as like people who are like part of the same culture. I feel like we're, we feel a bit divided, um, for different reasons. And I think, mo I think maybe most of that is like, because we're so different culturally, that there is a bit of a disconnect that, sh that there shouldn't be. So you're saying before we could even solve the problem of whether or not we can leave or should leave, I'm sorry, the United States, it's we have to create uh, relationships wherever we want to go in Africa before First. that happens. Okay. All right. Anyone else want to yeah, get to the I uh, think question? That, I agree. Um, I don't think enough of us have gone to any part of Africa yet. Um, and I mean, of course, with the restrictions on travel and stuff now, I just think that we don't take advantage of it at an early age. A lot of us don't, you know, um, we, they don't, we don't even know where to start. I don't think that we've been taught enough about it and about like, um, if you don't have a lot of friends who are native of like Africa, different parts of Africa, then you're not really exposed to it. Sure, 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 sure. But there are places in, in, in the continent that have welcomed Africans or black people from the diaspora back home, right? So I, I wanna hit on the initial question again, just to get a, a clear answer on this. Should we be planning to go back 
to our motherland or should we be working to solidify things here? Why can't we do both? I think that we are the master generation of multitasking and we are all capable of going there, coming back, allowing that exchange to happen. And I, I don't want us to just eradicate ourselves from being here. Yeah. We still have a place here, but we also have a place there. Yep. I love your, I love your both comment, right? You said, you know, it's both sides. Michael has a tip, yeah, please go for it. Yeah, I think what you guys are both saying is really important. Um, I think when we say Africa, it makes it seem as though it's a country, it's a continent. There's Talk so many countries there. Um, so it's like, where are we going in that continent? Uh, I feel as though uh, descendants of enslaved persons should be able to get free DNA testing. I don't think we should have to pay for 23andMe. I don't think I should have to pay to find out what my roots are, especially knowing the history of America. So I think when we talk about reparations, that should be one of the forms of reparations that uh, descendants of enslaved persons should have. So then upon knowing historically where your roots are, you'll be more in tune to, I wanna go to Ghana. I wanna go to Nigeria. I wanna go to Liberia. That to me speaks more to learning versus just grouping all of these countries together and just saying Africa because they all have their own cultures. And I want to I think we should respect that mm -hmm. um, African-Americans. We created a culture as displaced persons in America. Sure. But let's respect um, sure. those are that consider themselves to be African. Yeah, I think I think just to be clear, though, uh, you know, that was part of the aim with the colonization uh, organization. So we're not saying Oh, specifically where in Africa? I just want to say within a country in Africa. I'll let it be your choice where. I think West Africa is a good place to start, right? But a country within Africa. Um, I think also, too, within that question, it assumes that we are a monolith, right? Mm -hmm. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses, and we're so diverse and, and beautiful in how we are just as a people naturally, without even trying. Mm -hmm. So for some of us, we can live our best lives and contribute to the culture as a whole in diaspora over in Africa, even pinpointing where we're from, and where we want to contribute to moving forward. Mm -hmm. Some of us are best suited here. And I think that overlooks, although we love our African brothers and sisters, my fiance is Liberian and trust me, I'm learning so much that I thought that I knew mm -hmm. as a lover of history, mm -hmm. but like some people are best served here. Yep. There are, we, there, how, how is America done without us? <laughs> we came over here and we, literally handed over this country with our blood, sweat, and tears. So to just kind of give it over, um, we've done that enough. So I think to answer the question, it's whichever one you feel best suits what you want to do to move forward the culture. But at the end of the day, this bridge has to be formed. Yep. Okay. Pick a side. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I like it all. I think it all works really well. You know, there's been this uh, resurgence of nationalism, right? This pride of being black and proud, right? Um, with, with blacks in America, right? And so we've seen that over the course of several years, right? I mean, uh, I remember Black Panther coming out and there was just this kind of dominance at the box office. And it was like this hope that it gave people who never saw themselves in, in a position like that on a, in a superhero movie, right? That we now did and stuff like that. And that's a movie, obviously. But it, I think it translated into different facets of society, right? Fashion, entertainment, we saw stuff in music. Um, but, you know, more recently, we've seen, you know, the return, return, the year of the return in Ghana. They went on for multiple years, right? Welcoming uh, folks of African descent, you know, uh, back to the country, right? So, you know, all good points and, you know, combining what you two just said, you know, you know, go back, stay and do the work. We shouldn't leave, you know, we built this. The question is, is fighting for equality in America a losing battle? So, English, English language is funny, right? Um, should black people be fighting for equality in America? I two-dimensionally think we should not. What we should be working towards, words matter, Yep, is balance. Equality and balance are two completely different things. One is mathematical. The other is human. To fight for equality could potentially suggest that you're fighting for the same things that people who have been in a position to oppress us have gotten, whether it fits us well or it doesn't. Balance suggests that the only thing that is in the best interest of all Black people 
and should be our priority is decolonization. Decolonization is not exclusively physical. It is the decolonization of your mind. It's the decolonization of your spiritual state. It's the decolonization of your family, particularly your children. The decolonization of their education, how they make money, how you commune with each other, and also including where you reside. Before any black person who has been conditioned by Western culture does anything in relationship to Africa or African culture, there has to be a decolonization of the mind. And if there isn't, we're gonna bring basketballs and drill music and trap music and Popeyes to Ghana and Mozambique. So if you hold with two hands all of this nonsense that has continued to distract us from what's best for all black people, you're going to track mud into the house of your mother. Before I run off a of track, that's what I think about. Yep. That. So is that, that I'll give you that three times. So is that kind of like Michael, and I, 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 that was dope, that was dope. So is that kind of like saying, I'm gonna get a little controversial here, right? And opening up the floor to anybody else. But is that similar to saying, you know, similar to when white people or people who are non-black move into a black neighborhood and bring with them all of the things that they had, their baggage from their, you know, wherever they came from to try to change the neighborhood. And I don't just mean Starbucks. I don't mean, you know, you know, cafes and stuff, but I'm talking about this place in Brooklyn, this neighborhood is accustomed to having loud music going until 12, 30, two o'clock in the morning, right? In the summertime, that's just what it is. Now they're calling the cops when a block party is happening, you know, at 4 p.m. Is it similar in that? I know it's different, but is it that regard? It's like, before you come, you got to understand where you're going. Because it talk, talks a little bit about what you said earlier. So, <clears throat> again, we're, we're not a monolith. I, mm -hmm. One thing I've been learning recently, and it's going to tie back into what, kind of what Michael was talking about. Mm -hmm. As a black woman, I've had to learn feminine energy. What I mean by that is this country teaches us so much because we're always reactionary, right? A lot of things are being talked to us through social media and just a lot of things that aren't, it gives us never, not enough time to just kind of be with self. Mm -hmm. In relationship to your question, I can't sit here and say that, yes, for me to sit here and fight is what I'm going to do. I feel like we're already exhausted. We already don't sleep enough as a culture, period. Mm. So to fight, I agree with you. We should change that word. We need to be resting and kind of putting our thought, mm. using our uh, other skills. But I see you're itching over here, so I'm curious what you're going to say, mm. but I'm going to finish my thought in that it's not a losing battle to do both because we're not going to all choose yep. the same thing, sure. if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I don't think every, all blacks agreed, right, with with the uh, American colonization society, right? All blacks didn't agree with that mindset of going back uh, to the continent. So there's that, but it dates back. So boys. what? So oh, I right. think the question now then transitions to Michael. But that's why we're still here. You know who is a monolith? Do you know who is a monolith? Who? I won't say it because y'all trying to do a show. But there are plenty of groups of people mm -mm. who are not black, who are monoliths, who have tried to be examples of what a healthy monolith is. And I won't go there. But when you say healthy monolith, I can either go down a path that mentions specific things or I can keep it general and we can we can be streamlined. What do you want to do? You can do what's in your heart. There was a time in the 80s when and this is all my opinion. Anyone who wants to, please educate me. My grandmother used to tell me of a time where Jewish people used to go out of their way to try and help black people. Yep. And as a result of the influence of certain groups that were at their height in the 80s, mm -hmm. even in the 60s and 70s, those groups that were looking to try and give us an example of what a healthy monolith is, were shamed for doing that. What am I saying? This whole black people are not a monolith essence article magazine write up idea thing that's been floating around for the last several years does not help us. Every other group of people 
who don't need anything from another group of people have acted at a monolith at one point in time in history. The reason you don't see it now is because everyone else already did it. And the world is waiting for us to do it. For the world, like, to see flying cars and to get off gas and charcoal and all that stuff, the world is waiting for everybody to, to start at a certain starting line. And by, when I say the world is waiting, I mean the world is waiting on black people. Everyone else has figured out something to contribute. Jeff Bezos just went into space. Flint still need water. Until black people can do things for black people and have the option of accepting help and assistance from other people. Yep. We are, and we see each other at a, for, at a fundamental level, there is the idea of a monolith is not shunned. Nothing is going to change and we still gonna be talking with beautiful books and tables and all that, beautiful. What happens? Every other group of people that committed to action and got results were a monolith at some point in time. This whole we are not a monolith nonsense does not work for us. And that's what I think. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Look, I, I think that, you know, there is a good point. You, you wanna respond? I have a question. I, I, wanna, I wanna change, I wanna change the, the, the topic, but you have a question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the for the answer for sure. again. Yeah. For sure. And thanks for the reference as well. Yeah, for sure. I also wanted to be like, yo, so I feel like you have a question that you want to ask, but I want to I want to give other folks a chance to answer. Intention is everything. I mentioned monolith because just historically other people constantly group us, but we're amongst each other. So I can 100 percent get behind exactly what you're saying, because that is the next step forward is to get on the same page and move forward and figure out what the plan. Democrats, Republicans, people are always telling us what to do and mm -hmm. always making us emotional to things. So I 100% can agree with, we do at some point to be a monolith. I only was intentionally bringing that up because again, gotta remind whoever's watching and people in the room, we all don't think alike, mm -hmm. but let's just start there, right? Where's there? Start where? That we all don't think alike. So maybe we should get on the same page. Um, it's pretty much like a prequel to what you're saying. Fair, 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 fair. Fair. I agree. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, thinking historically about the inequities that uh, Black people have had, it's what has kept us so unified in regards for the Montgomery um, bus boycott, um, us not being able to vote, um, us being enslaved. They were all things that regardless of our social class, our politics, we were united on. And I think that was what held the monolithic viewpoint together. And as we have progressed as a race, um, there are more dis divisive things such as politics, um, political parties, our social class specifically. And I think what we've seen right now with the Black Lives Matter movement is this unified push regardless of how we feel um, that we shouldn't be shot by police, um, that we're more so unified and just that, that framework of thinking. So it seems unfortunate that so much trauma has kept us as a, as a group of people united um, but I, I wonder what it looks like for us to have more joy outside of, I know this is, we're not all aligned on this, but a, a first black president or things of that nature. So even with this question being posed, it's, it's divisive, but we all want some type of commonality of us being successful, happy, you know, having pride. So there's a, there's a cultural response to that. Like the things that we were taken from during colonization, like the, the practices that we we're practicing, be it Akan or Dogon or Ifa or Ashanti, are the things that are not rooted in trauma that give us all a common denominator. Be it from the patterns of dress, um, what defines good character, how you treat elders, the, the family structure within a home, dance, like, there are things that we got taken directly out of that are completely and definitively cultural for us that define us as a people. And I think when we, when, when, cause you make a great point about our, our unification and, the, and our, 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 our basic needs being unified by the things that, that negatively impact us. That's a great point. But to the contrary, like, I think the thing that's equal to seeing the thing that's equal to the joy that you get from seeing a black president or rather a black person in the position of Western authority, you get this in a, you get an equal amount of joy from seeing what it would be referred to as a Baba, which is a spiritual leader in a culture like Ashanti or Ifa. 
and the way that those systems are set up and the things that you have to do to be in that kind of space, to, to be in alignment with that, to be within good character. I think those are the things that when we return to, when the gap between us and our, and our natural state closes, we won't want to participate in Western anything. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fair. Listen, this is all great here. And, and I want to give an opportunity for others to get in here as well. Um, and this can go on for probably a couple more hours, but, and it all really good, all really good stuff here. And we can dive into a couple different branches, but I want to, uh, get us to wrap. Uh, I want y'all to take a second and think about this next question. It's going to be quick answers. All right. I'm going to get from everyone. Is America our best option despite racism? This is 30 second answers. No. You can give me a little bit more than no. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I just got kind of go from what my experience is, what my, what my, um, what my parents' experience is, what my family's experience is in this country, you know, throughout the years, what history is here, and how we've been treated. Um, to me, it's extremely clear. Um, and I mean, I just don't, yeah, no, I don't think this is the best option for us to be honest in my hearts of hearts. I think, I think most of us have, if not all of us has like, hasn't had like this anxiety attack of like, where can we go? And that's like, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but like, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Thank you. No, thank you. It's a no for me, dog. Um, <laughs> there was life before this. <laughs> and, you know, I watched High on the Hog on Netflix. And when I say, the peaceful euphoria I had just watching the first episode. The best one. We good. This ain't it. Yep. No. We built this country, can build anything we want to. Say it loud for the people in the back. <laughs> we built this country, can build anything we want to, wherever we want to, at whatever time we're ready to do that. I'm going to Ghana, but you know. That's hey, me. right here. Yes. Yes. Um, for us, no, <laughs> for the individual that's interested exclusively in benefiting as an individual, America might be for you. If you care about your family and people that look like you, it's a no. Mm -hmm. Us, no. I really think we've been on like the same kind of wavelength this whole, this whole night. Cause I wanted to say something similar to that. If you're really about self and this is all you know, then by all means stay. When you are introduced to the amazingness of where we come from, you don't want to look back. I'll never forget my first trip to Nigeria. I literally cried on the plane and I'm not just saying that. I, I felt something. I felt, a, I felt a few emotions actually. It was like, will I belong? Will they accept me? Um, it's like, oh my God, I'm home. It was like, Dang, I can't believe I really flew here, I'm here. But it was so many different things happening. And then I didn't want to come back. I truly didn't want to. Um, but then when I did come back, I had a better sense of self. And it was like, wow, I was just introduced to some magic. So I, I wouldn't want to stay. Ooh. Can we just get a quick ashe real quick one time? Ashe. Y'all are all dope people. And the great part about Do You Know Black is that we can have this conversation right here and our viewers will be able to check it out. And not only just our viewers, but people who aren't black will be able to check this out and be like, okay, I think I could understand a little better about why we need to have these types of conversations or why I need to just be a listener, a consumer of this conversation so I can be a better ally, a better human being, in this world, particularly to support black people. With that being said, I wanna thank my guests. I wanna thank our viewers for watching. This has been the Do You Know Black Kickback. I'm your host, Lamont Carolina. We will see you next time. Mm. Kick it. Uh.